This is the first of two parts of a discussion of aiming at pool. Uh, a couple of disclaimers. It is not in any way a tutorial about how to aim at pool, uh, nor does, is it a detailed uh, history or compendium of aiming techniques or methods. Uh, I am far from an expert uh, in, in that. What it is instead is just a description of some of the basic concepts and ideas behind uh, different aiming techniques and, and methods that I hope to present as a context for further discussion. This entire discussion is limit both parts is limited to center ball hits on the cue ball, that is hits along the vertical center of the cue ball. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about aiming systems and I'm going to define an aiming system as having three essential elements. First is a prescription for where the target is, where the pocket is. Second is a prescription for where to point the stick, the stick line. And third is a prescription for where to sight, the sight line. Uh, if uh, a, a so-called system is missing one or more of these essential elements, then it may be very valuable information, but it is not an aiming system. Uh, prescriptions for where uh, the pocket is uh, can take many forms. You could be determining a contact point, you could be recognizing or specifying an angle, or you could be recognizing or specifying a ball overlap. Here's a picture of a straight-in shot or a full shot. Uh, the red star and the blue star are the cue ball contact point and the object ball contact point, respectively. When the cue ball reaches the object ball, these are the two points that are going to hit one another. Uh, also shown on here is the stick line, uh, and on top of that is the sight line, as indicated by the blue eye uh, over top of the stick. Uh, like shown here, the stick line, the sight line, and the contact point line are all the same line for this straight shot, and it's hard to imagine any reasonable aiming system proposing anything different than this here. Things are different when you go to a cut shot. As you can see here, the stick line and the contact point line are no longer the same. Uh, they're separated from one another, but importantly, they are parallel to one another. For a given shot, such as the one shown here, any valid aiming system must get to this stick line and get to this contact point line, or else the shot's not going to go where it needs to go. From this point, the only thing that can differ about one aiming system from another is the sight line. Getting the most productive sight line can be critically important. This is just an illustration showing how uh, just changing vantage point by a few degrees can reveal a simplicity or a symmetry that was unavailable from the old view. Here's a cut to the right, maybe a 30 degree cut to the right with several different uh, initial cue ball locations from close to the object ball to far away from the object ball. Now imagine you're hitting this shot, cutting it to the right uh, with the cue ball far from the object ball, the farthest shot. Uh, be honest with yourself now, how do you do this? Uh, many people will look at the contact point on the object ball first, and then they'll bend down over the shot with their eye or center of sight over top of the stick, and they will look at view sight along that line from the stick to the contact point on the object ball. If you do that, you are not looking parallel to the line of the stick, parallel to the line the stick is moving. Furthermore, uh, for every single one of these cue ball locations, you actually have a different sight line. That's a serious problem. What you're not doing is taking advantage of the symmetry of the situation. It's like you're not looking along the rows on the previous slide. So most aiming systems, or any reasonable aiming system, will have exactly the same li sight line for any one of these shots. So I reject any aiming system that proposes the sight line not be parallel uh, to the stick line. Uh, in fact, there's many players, uh, even very experienced players, who, when introduced to a simple aiming system like fractional ball aiming system or something like that, uh, think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, I think the explanation for this is that they have not been aiming parallel to the stick line, uh, like is shown here, and I think any simple aiming system that gets them to aim parallel to the stick line uh, will let them take advantage of the symmetry we've been talking about. Ghost ball aiming is a good starting point for any discussion on aiming at pool. There's two different flavors of ghost ball uh, aiming, uh, simple ghost ball aiming and corrected ghost ball aiming. Uh, in sim simple ghost ball aiming, you take that orange arrow and you point it through the center of 
the object ball to the center of the pocket uh, where that arrow hits the the front edge of the object ball is where the blue star is that's the contact point on the object ball you then imagine a phantom or ghost cue ball uh, that's touching at that contact point that's the ghost ball uh, and if you replaced the phantom cue ball with the actual cue ball you'll probably miss the shot uh, and the reason is uh, collision induced throw from the friction between the balls will send the object ball a few degrees to the left in this case further downstream uh, so as a result, you do this whole process over again, but instead of pointing to the center of the pocket, you point a few degrees to the right of the pocket and get a ghost ball position. That's corrected ghost ball aiming. And when I talk about ghost ball aiming, that's what I'm talking about. The previous slide on ghost ball aim uh, was actually a technique for determining the blue contact point on the object ball. Uh, and it was not an aiming system because it said nothing about the stick line nor about the sight line. And in fact, the ghost ball aim uh, to determine the blue contact point is the first part of other aiming systems. Uh, to turn the ghost ball method into an actual ghost ball aiming system, we need to specify the stick line and the sight line. If we specify the stick line uh, as going through the center of the ghost ball, as shown here, and we specify the sight line as being directly over top of the stick line, uh, then we have the ghost ball aiming system. Uh, note the red uh, contact point on the cue ball here that's going to hit the blue contact point on the object ball, uh, but that's uh, no part of the ghost ball aiming system. Note also that the stick is pointing, where the person's eye is pointing, uh, is basically into empty space. There's no part of the object ball there. Here's a situation where the most productive sight line is definitely not that of the ghost ball uh, aiming system. In other words, definitely not over the line of the stick. This is a thin cut uh, with a cue ball close to the object ball. Uh, almost any player, if you watch them and watch where their eye is, uh, will sight this from the right edge of the cue ball to the left edge of the object ball. So this is sighting along the contact point line. So I've described the ghost ball aiming method and shown you at least one situation, a thin cut, where the ghost ball method does not seem to be the most productive approach. Uh, in part two, I will focus on uh, what we can learn by thinking about focusing on contact points uh, and also by focusing on achieving a particular ball overlap.